Okay, I'm ready. We're back with another episode of me watching a real driving test live. I'd like to start this one by telling you what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to leave a like on this video. <laughs> That's the first thing, guys. Tick that box. Smash that like. We're here at Hendon Driving Test Center, and we're going to look at a real driving test route on a real driving test. We're leaving the test center there. You can actually just see in the rear view mirror, we passed one of the examiners. And there's a test center on your right. Now, this bit's important when you leave any test center. Ooh, we're way over that center line. Okay, when we leave any test center, make sure we leave slowly. When we return to the test center, make sure we return slowly. So the beginning and the end of your driving test, captain slowly. Right, we've got priority here. A lot of people stop here. There's no need to stop. I know the road markings are terrible but uh, no need to stop here so we've got priority we've got a speed limit of 10 miles an hour here in the Hendon driving test center there are some signs dotted around here and there we also have these uh, kind of uh, not official pedestrian crossings you might see that little slab there in the middle of the road just beyond the learner, there's going to be a zebra crossing that is official. You can see the black and white stripes. That's the entrance to the construction area on the left. Do take care. There is a mirror there to see if there's any pedestrians coming out from the construction site there on the left. Uh, there's another mirror around the estate as well as you come back in. We might see that one at the end. And if you're here for the results to find out if it's a pass or fail, because at the moment I don't know. And if you're watching with us, then, you know, make notes, see if you think it's a pass or a fail. So at the end of the road, we'll most likely be turning left. Let's see, the learner in front's gone right. Way more likely to go left here at Hendon. Right will just take you to a roundabout. The roundabout's a little bit busy, actually, that roundabout on the right-hand side. Uh, that's near Collingdale Station. So if you know the area, it's around about just near the Collingdale station. And usually you'll turn right on that roundabout, third exit. So if you do practice with whoever you're practicing with, go have a little look at that roundabout. And let's see. Now, back at the first junction when we left the test center, we were over the center line. So if you want to rewind, that's what Frenchy. Um, you'll see the car was over the center line. If you look at the car in front, it's next to the center line. That's the perfect position for turning right. It allows enough room for the cars to enter, so we're not obstructing any oncoming traffic. Ooh, positioning. Looks like we're also turning right, yeah? Um, okay. <laughs> All right, uh, let's refocus. Now, if anything does happen on your driving test and you think, oh no, I've done it wrong, or oh, I failed for being over that center line, like we've just done, just refocus, put it behind us, we'll find out at the end. Uh, if you want some quick stories from my experience as a driving instructor, I've been on a few tests without giving too much details where there's a couple of serious sorts that have happened. Um, if you've watched any of my material in the past, you might already know these stories. And long story short, the examiner says, congratulations, you've passed. So never give up is the moral of the story. So we've gone left like I predicted, and we normally go left again at the traffic light here. This will take you onto the A41 dual carriageway with a speed limit of 50 miles an hour. So let's have a look, see if we turn left. It's a straight only from the arrow, but you can also turn left at the traffic light. Nice approaching speed, good stopping there just before the solid line, the very faint solid line. And that's the stop line. So if you see any solid lines like the one we can see just ahead of us, uh, although it's very faint, that is the stop line. Always stop at the first stop line. No stop line, no stopping. Hit that like button if you like coffee. Okay, so this traffic light might take a little while. At the beginning of your driving test, Although the examiner will ask you to do an eyesight test, that's the first thing, they'll also ask you a tell me question. So would you tell me, how would you check to see that your brake lights are working on the vehicle? Now the answer for any light question is turn them on and use reflections. 
Show me questions are usually done on the next road. We said it was a dual carriageway of 50 miles an hour, and the examiner will ask you to show how you would, for example, open and close your side window. Not the door, just the window. And that is done at high speed sometimes. So the examiner will always start that question. You may already know this, but for first time listeners, when it's safe and that means you can literally do it whenever you feel it's safe to do it so there is no rush on the show me question make sure you do it when you feel it's safe to do it and you can operate the switch in a safe and controlled manner so we're going straight we're not going on to the dual carriageway this is a very good line excellent going straight ahead at this junction this would be a nice route this side's a little bit more detailed the dual carriageway bit people have seen quite a lot of i'm sure that has the mill hill circus roundabout the apex corner roundabout and if you do turn right on the apex corner roundabout that was a very nice of the mercedes I think there was a Mercedes, and no one on the crossing. Then you'll go up to an even bigger roundabout. Uh, roundabout. That's my London accent. Um, called the Sterling Corner Roundabout. That one particularly is very difficult. So it looks like we're pulling up in a safe and convenient place on the left. Looks like we've hit the curb. The car's kind of bouncing a little bit there on the left. It might have just been a hole by the drain. Uh, looking at the line there on the bonnet, we're going to compare it to the next couple of times that we're going to pull up on the left. So if you look at the yellow line, that's quite visual, but the yellow line is not always there. You can see it's going into the left side of that black patch in the front of the bonnet, the hood, if you're from the States. I'm going to use the curb line. So the curb line was just left of that position. So next time we pull up, I'm going to see if it's in exactly the same place. This is really for my reference. A lot of people don't like these. These are called reference points. So any line that lines up on the hood or the bonnet, that's not a crossing, so continue. We have a warning triangle, there's a side road. We have a warning triangle, there's a school. And look at that, bish bash bosh. What on earth is my guy doing? <laughs> okay, quite a lot happening there, huh? So look out for those warning triangles. So those warning triangles are very helpful for the theory test, especially. Theory test has 50 multiple choice questions. And then the second part of the theory test has hazard perception videos. So the hazard perception video you probably already know is exactly like what you're watching now. So you, we would click as soon as we saw that person in the road, click, we get scored five out of five. If we clicked when we got to the person, talking about people, a bit random actions from the pedestrians there, um, then we will receive zero. So we've got to click as soon as we see the hazards. And this is really helpful, obviously, for our practical driving test. Okay, now, um, these roads here are taking us towards a university. Uh, if we turn right, I believe it's Brunel. I'm, I'm almost certain it is. I hope I'm not wrong about that. For some reason, I feel I might be. Let's see. We're in a position for turning right. And we're going to see if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> Unless we've got the similar position that we took when we exit the test center, which was a right position. There we go. That's nice. Good positioning. And yes, see how we join the uh, side of the road. There's the university, Middlesex. Oh, I knew I was wrong. Brunel is uh, another test center. That's in Uxbridge, West London. Okay. And this road is a 20 mile an hour road. Quite a lot of signs here. That's not pedestrian crossing uh, before we said that. And that is an essential island or safety island, if you like, for pedestrians to wait until the traffic's passed before crossing. This is a pedestrian crossing, obviously. What comes after flashing yellow lights? A, red, or B, green. You might say, Scott, I'm not here for my theory test. Flashing yellow lights are very important, and the answer would be green uh, so always after flashing yellow we'll receive a green light if no one's using the crossing you may you proceed with caution as the term they use uh, but you may actually go so flashing yellow lights no one there on you go still 20 oh no it's changed to 30 now but we're approaching traffic lights looks like we may be turning right here we're in a right only lane nope we've checked our mirrors we signaled and we've made our way across to the left lane we're going straight at the junction. You can see the far left was left only. So three different lanes. Okay, that was still yellow. That's okay. We're going to continue. We've crossed a solid line and it changed to yellow as we crossed that solid line. So we're going to continue. 
Um, so three different lanes, three different directions there, all marked out by road markings. That's the big arrows that we saw. So the green, sorry, you do get the green arrows on the traffic lights, but it was the white arrows painted on the road. Here we have a nice narrow road. I'll put it up on the left. Okay, so look at the line on the curb. Ooh, it went all the way to the black bit that we talked about earlier, but it's back in the same position. Don't know why we're, yeah, there we go. We don't want to block those driveways. So you see there's a drop curb there where the yellow line is, that's a driveway. Unless the examiner say it's okay, we must not stop in front of driveways. All round observation, signal, always signal when we pull over to stop, always signal when we pull away again afterwards. And on we go, no time wasted. So that was excellent. The examiners don't like that. Okay, sometimes people sit there for quite a long time and they'll take all the observations really slow. <laughs> the examiners, they don't like that. They want you just to look over your left shoulder, right shoulder, go. Remember, always signal when you pull over, even if you're pulling over to the right. And this is the maneuver, pull over and stop on the right. So that was quite nice, actually. No oncoming traffic, it was safe. We've obviously done our mirrors and signals. We've pulled over, we stopped in a reasonably safe place there on the right as well. The examiners might say in this occasion that it's all right to stop in front of the driveways. Usually they do on the maneuvers. So with or without that, we've done an excellent job. All right, so all round observations at the start of all your maneuvers, that means break your neck, look over your right shoulder in this situation, which is the least dangerous being pedestrian side. And then over to the far left, which will be over your left shoulder out the back left window, and that'll be the most dangerous side in this situation. All right, so there's some traffic passing here. There's not much space between us and that traffic that's passing us. So sometimes we wanna put the brake on. Now, if the oncoming traffic, we do wanna stop. So stop, 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 stop. No, Ooh, did they? I don't know. It's a little bit close. Now, there's a possibility that they may not have seen this oncoming traffic as they've been doing the maneuver. They may have been looking behind and not all round. So remember we talked about breaking our neck at the beginning of all maneuvers and again in the middle and again at the end. So at the start, the middle and the end, break your neck. And it's there again, are we stopping? Mm, it's getting a little bit close before we're stopping. You see, I don't even know. Maybe that was the examiner stopping the car. So when we're doing the maneuvers, we must always stop, especially when the traffic's that close, like now. Let's see the bus. So that's fine. You could continue now. That bus is so far away. There's nobody coming behind us. Absolutely safe. But now, ooh, get the brake on. Stop. Let the bus pass. Have another look. And then continue. All right, so maneuvers finished. Halfway through the route so far. If you were wondering how long a driving test, a real driving test <laughs> lasts, you're about to find out the real answer. And looking at the time code now, it's roughly 30 minutes, although I know that anyways. Um, so roughly 30 minutes of driving, 45 minutes in total from like hello to goodbye. So yeah, it might be a little bit longer, a little bit less, but that's what we're judged on, the roughly 30 minutes of driving which isn't too much. Um, it usually goes quite quickly for most people. So if you get a good hour practice before your test, which is recommended, then we're warmed up and ready for that half an hour drive with our examiner. Just treat your examiner the same way you would, um, I don't know, say your parents or something like that, or someone that you would, an elder that you'd probably, shouldn't say elder, should I? <laughs> Cancel. Um, you know what I'm saying, that you give respect to. Just be nice, kind, considerate. Regardless of what the situation is, I'm not going to go into detail, but I think we can all use our imaginations. Just be kind, considerate, listen. Uh, if you don't understand anything that the examiners asked us to do, just ask them nicely to repeat it. They'll be more than willing to give the instructions and directions again, as long as it's safe to do so. Okay, we've got Nana Def there trying to cross the road, but there was enough distance and the pedestrian did slow down and stop. So always look at the feet. If the feet are one in front of the other, they're clearly in motion, not stopping. So if it's safe, internal mirror, put the brake on, come to a stop. If their feet are side by side, that means they're standing still. And if there's sort of eye contact, body language, use all that stuff. Okay, here we've got very faint giveaway lines that the student's done well, so the examiner won't give any direction here. They were 
want to see you observe that there's a junction, slow down, do the observations at the giveaway lines like we just did. And then how do we move across to the opposite side of the junction like we've done here? So it was very good. As we've entered into the new road, the students clearly looked for the oncoming traffic and is ready to come to a slow stop if na na oh, I'm talking like an examiner. If we need to, right? Same situation again. If nothing's said, follow the road ahead. Good slow down stop at the faint giveaway lines. What's that shopping trolley there? And uh, right, left, right is the minimum observations at all junctions. Must stop at stop signs and solid lines. Didn't mean to make that rhyme. Was that a... <laughs> Um, right, left, right, minimum observations, and yes, it must be a complete stop at the stop sign as well, not like me on my mock test, which I won't put a link to in this video, uh, where I don't come to a complete stop, even though I acknowledge the sign. Um, so make sure you put that break on. One of my students counts to three seconds, so there's no arguments, so that's a complete stop. And then if it's safe, we can make our way across. Just going back to those observations, right, left, right, they are the minimum observations. Looks like we might be doing another pullover and stop on the left here. Always signal when we pull over to stop. Always signal when we drive off again after. We would do this at least three times on our driving test. That line is in an excellent, I call it a line, it's the curb line. It's the edge of the pavement where the pavement stops and the road begins. And can you see where it's positioned on the hood of the bonnet? I'm just going to lead out to our American followers. The hood of the bonnet there, and it's just meeting in, I don't know, can we say halfway between the edge and that black spot which we talked about in the center of the bonnet? It's kind of halfway, isn't it, in between that and the sort of edge of the corner of the hood there as well always do your all-round observations before moving off and leave a like if you're gonna finish your coffee oh emergency stop so that was good nice hard break that's the easy part it's the examiner will give you the speech where you pulled off tell you to drive on tell you to put the hand up and then when you hear the word stop you stop that's the easy part the hard part was, before we drive away, we've got to break our neck again. So for all the observations, left to right shoulder and all the mirrors in between. But just do it nice and snappy, left shoulder, right shoulder. You might have heard of all the technical six-point checks and seven-point checks and all these other references. But let's just keep it simple. Check over your left shoulder, right shoulder, break your neck. Okay, similar junction. This time we're turning right. This examiner would have give us directions there. Oh, by the way, we haven't talked about the independent driving. So uh, we've not got audio because we're not allowed to have audio on the real driving tests. Don't ask me why. And the sat nav could be on. The sat nav could be giving the directions here. So that's 20 minutes of your test. 80% of tests will start with the sat-nav, looking at the bonnet line again. Oh, it just looks so close there as we come in. It's like we're nose diving. It's like a sudden movement, sudden pull over. I don't know if the examiner's giving late direction. They are trained very well and supposed to give it a direction in appropriate time. But that just looks all sudden, doesn't it? So I like to say like an airplane landing at an airport. Nice and long, nice and smooth and gentle, slowing down gradually and then coming into land. Um, look for lampposts, don't crash into them, and trees. They're good landmarks for places where there's raised curb and a convenient or safe place to pull up on the left. So if we're looking for those ahead of time, they can give us that long runway, just referring back to the, like the airplane landing at the airport, and then we can aim for the, that place in the distance you get the idea right we're joining the dual carriageway here this is not an easy turn it's a very busy dual carriageway it's a good thing we've got that rever um, reverse or rear camera so we can see all that traffic now that i think was a good entry point there was a vehicle coming down the center lane but there was a little gap between that 
and us moving out. So they took that opportunity. There was no other vehicles around. As soon as they've joined, we're turning right the traffic lights. This is tricky. No room to move across anymore. The examiner would have given that direction if I had the audio. I could check, but obviously. <coughs> Put your claws away, Scott. Um, we don't know. <laughs> there you go. I'm getting better. I'm getting there. Um, so will we be moving into that right lane? Probably not. I wouldn't at least. I would just keep going straight now, but we've made our way across. Okay, brilliant. So anyways, when we join the dual carriageway, just coming back to that far right side behind that grey car, two car rule, two car rule, two car rule. When we join the dual carriageway, we put our foot down on the gas and got going. And talking about get going, if the examiner does give that direction to turn right at this traffic light in appropriate time, then make sure you get going on that one as well. And you do your mirrors, you do your signals, and you move across to that far right lane. Accelerate when you change lanes. It's often safer as long as there's no traffic ahead. Accelerate and change lanes and take your position. If you're the lead car, be the lead car. And by accelerating as you change lanes, you'll stay the lead car and then you'll be safer. Okay, so don't be scared. Experiment a little bit. If it does sound dangerous, I do understand. Once you start experimenting, you trust it, then you'll realize that I'm speaking the truth and I'm not wasting your time. Did I um, say anything about leaving a like on the video, by the way? It is free. Absolutely free. So, um... Feel free <laughs> to leave a like. You're amazing. All right, so we've got another long traffic lights. This is uh, Hendon Central Underground Station directly ahead of us. This is a very, very large crossroads. Now, crossroads are just as important as roundabouts. Everybody talks about roundabouts, and I completely get it, because there's 101 things going on at roundabouts. That's why they're so tricky. The secret to roundabouts is the speed that we approach the roundabout. It's the secret to all junctions, and it's the main reason why accidents happen. So if we approach junctions safely and slowly, the roundabout won't be too tricky. Two car rule is two cars going way in the middle of the junction. So we're the first cars, no one else there. We're gonna go into the junction, we're gonna slow down, I'm gonna stop in this position. This is a very, very good position. Uh, as you can see, there's no one behind us, right? So we're the only car in the junction, but this is it. That van really should be moving across as well ahead of us. Now, this is the position. We're not going over that center line. The center line would be where the edge of that cement, where the traffic light is with the back to us in the center of the road here. Uh, that's that edge there where the vehicles have their lane. If we go over that center and into their lane, that would be dangerous. So we want to keep to the center line. Use the imagination there and paint the line on the ground. I'm not going to do any effects of the videos. This is nice and simple. Now, when we're turning right, we also stop when we're in line with the center of that road as well. So this would be it. It's a little bit tricky to see on the camera here because we can't really see the center of the road on the right. But if you just, again, use your imaginations, we're at the center of this road that we're on and we've stopped in line with that center line and we've also stopped in line in front of the car roughly with the center of the next road. And we're gonna wait here until the traffic stops or there is no traffic because that traffic has priority. Then we turn right. There is a solid line there, that's a stop line. So if that traffic light was red, we must stop at that solid line. Remember, if there's no stop line, there's no stopping. Because a lot of time we will turn right and there will be a red traffic light and there won't, in capital letters, be a stop line. No stop line, no stopping. Okay, we're turning left. So we've turned towards Hendon Central Station. We've now turned left after. These are very narrow roads, and this corner part which we're in at the moment is extremely busy because a lot of people try to park their cars here to go to the station. Here we have a large vehicle, but there's enough room. Oncoming traffic, less space, less speed. See how I'm kind of predicting that? I'm like, what's going on? This, this is boring, right? But that vehicle, can we? what's going to happen next? That's the anticipation and planning. Now, this student's good at that. They do have quite a lot of experience, and it's really the last part of learning to drive. So it comes when we've got more time behind the wheel, probably roughly about 20 hours, something like that, just to give a benchmark to everybody in case you're wondering. So once we really hit that 20 hour mark, we start to look long, like as far ahead as we can see. There's some parked cars, a little bend in the road, 
And yeah, the oncoming traffic. I think my eyesight starting to go. <laughs> it took a while, didn't it? Back to those hazard perception videos. I was scored zero. Uh, probably where I failed four times. Anyways, um, I should probably stop shooting myself in my foot. Turning left, no doubt. Yes. Okay, so mirror signals, basics. Um, back to the awareness and planning, the last part of learning to drive, looking as long and as far ahead as possible. So, um, you know, planning early. So that triangle is our first priority. Then what's next? So there was some cones there. That's finished. Park cars, I don't see any oncoming traffic, but I think you get the idea. So it's just about looking ahead, assessing what's there as much as we can see, and then sort of deciding and then taking an action. What are we going to do? We're going to slow down, we're going to stop, we're going to pull over. There's only three things we can do, and that's the three S's that's slow, stop, and swerve. If you want a basic for your real driving test on why did I fail, it's because we made someone else slow, stop, or swerve. So the three S's are serious. So when something's happening and someone needs to take action, they'll do one of the three or all three S's, who knows? Um, but that's serious. So watch out for those on the driving test. We're heading back towards the test center now. We've probably got roughly five minutes or less. What's the speed limit here? There's no signs. Oh, here we go, 20. Yeah. Right, look out for those. They're everywhere. It doesn't matter where you're doing your driving test. 20s, super, super common. It's very, very easy to go over 20. That's why I'm bringing it up. So make sure that you keep to it. Turning left here, please. Good. Now speed change. See that? We've left the 20 road. We've entered into a new road, which is 30. We're very close to the pavement. Give me a heart attack. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, slowing down a little bit now. Even though it's a 30... Look, we talked about assessing. We can't see anything, can we? So do a speed that we can react at. This on your driving test report would be called an appropriate speed. So even though it's a 30 limit, do the speed that we can react at. That's the appropriate speed. Okay, we're coming towards a set of traffic lights. Just after the traffic lights is the test center. This is the crossroads at the beginning of the test where we went straight ahead. We're going to go straight ahead again back to the test center now. So I got a little bit distracted there. I'm have a sip of coffee. Okay, now we're coming back to the traffic lights we just talked about. Take the middle lane like we did earlier. Do you remember? There was a left-only lane, right-only lane. This middle lane is the one that goes straight across. So that happened probably roughly halfway through the test. Same situation here coming back. The reason why I say these type of tips, if you like, is... If we find ourselves in a right-only lane, don't panic, okay? The best thing to do is just to try and know that we're in a right-only lane. So this is all about those road markings. You can go right on your driving test, even though the examiner or the sat-nav has said straight. You're still allowed to go right. You will not fail. Now, if you don't go right, you will fail. <laughs> Why? I've been told off for asking questions. I sound sarcastic and patronizing. But the reason is because I just want you guys to come up with the answer, right? So hopefully in another five years, I'll be better at this. Um, if we break the road rules or the road markings, then we get marked down on our driving test. And again, this is a major driver fault or serious or dangerous driver fault, um, which are classed by the examiners. Okay, so we're just heading straight across a little bit of a wiggly crossroads offset. 30 still. Good visibility. Road conditions are a little bit bumpy here, so just watch out for some potholes. Do get lots of holes. You might see some patches on the road for some reason. This area where the bridges are, lots of holes. If you're doing your test at Mill Hill, there's some bridges just by the test center there as you come around. There's always a hole there. 
<laughs> if you go in it, don't panic. It's normal. I don't think you can avoid it, to be honest. If you know they're there, excellent. If not, um, you have to go through them. Just try and slow the vehicle down. Hold the wheel firmly. Take the next road on the right, the post box here. Turning right. Move across. Get across. All the way. Yes. Look at that position. Perfect. On that center line. Try not to go over. It looks like we're over, but hey-ho, there's no oncoming traffic. Nice, good turn there, obviously slowing down because we had that pedestrian crossing the road and more pedestrians there. Good looking into the new road. Clearly the students looking into the new road because look, they're seeing what's happening next, right? What's going on with this car? Yeah, it's maybe moving off, I don't know. The van's coming, there's a bit of room. That's okay. 10 mile an hour speed limit through here. And we talked about these um, Official pedestrian crossing there. The zebra one we can see coming up next where the construction site is. And then like the patches where there will be a triangle showing a pedestrian crossing. So do take note of those patches as well where the triangles are. Look for the pedestrians everywhere in this estate. And stick to that 10 mile an hour. It will really help us. There's the patch on the ground. That wouldn't be, I mean, it's leading into a wall isn't it so that wouldn't be this one here goes into the park though so you know maybe if someone's there standing looking to cross and it's safe i would probably say allow them to cross the road at these little walkways you will see the warning triangle i believe just ahead this is our priority do not slow down stay at 10 mile an hour speed limit keep going you have priority here it's safe good visibility there's the warning triangle on the left there's the patch again. Turning left back into the test center. This is very, very narrow, so take it very, very slow. Call back to the beginning of the test. Slow at the beginning, slow at the end of all driving tests. There's another patch. Don't hit the pavement, please. Thank you. So just take it really slow. Baby crawling speed. And that's the end of the test. Unfortunately, it was a fail because of the observations and not stopping for the oncoming traffic when we had the maneuver earlier. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to follow. Love you guys. Speak to you on the next one. If you like content like this, you know what to do.